Hello friends, now I will be talking to you about ARDS that is acute respiratory distress syndrome which is also known as non cardiogenic pulmonary edema because in this condition also lot of fluid accumulate in the interstitium. This is in contrast to cardiac pulmonary edema where accumulation of fluid occurs mainly in the alveoli and one most important difference between non cardiac pulmonary edema and cardiac pulmonary edema is in this L A pressure. which we measure as pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is normal. In cardiac pulmonary pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is increased. Okay. So, we learned about that ARDS is the accumulation of fluid. Now, what is this ARDS? It is a clinical syndrome where there occurs the damage to alveolar capillary damage. As the capillaries are damaged, that lead to leaking of fluid from the alveolar capillaries into the interstitium and that is the basic patho pathology. So, let us see what happened in the pathology. First of all, this is the alveolus, this is the capillary A alveolus arteriole or capillaries and damage occurs to this capillaries. So, a protein rich fluid accumulates in the interstitium. As the interstitium is full of protein rich fluid that reduces the lung compliance lung compliance is reduced and that make the lung stiff that is why it is also known as stiff lung. The lung loses the elasticity. What else happened in the pathology? There occurs damage to type 1 and type 2 pneumocyte and we know very well that type 2 pneumocyte they produce the surfactant. So, surfactant will be less so that lead to collapse of the alveoli. So that lead to lung atelectasis. This is the basic what happened in the pathology, right? Now let's see for the causes of ARDS. In the causes, it could be direct lung injury. This happen in pneumonia, gastric aspiration, it account for around 30 percent of the cases, especially in the post operative stage. Toxic gas inhalation, some lung contusion are the uncommon causes of direct lung injury. Then we have indirect lung injury, shock, any condition which lead to systolic BP below 20, below 90 millimeter mercury can produce and it can account for 20 percent cases. But the most important cause which account for 40 percent is gram negative septicemia. So, gram negative septicemia is the number one cause, second is aspiration and third is shock. These three together constitute around 90 
percent cases of ARDS. Then other common are plasmodium falciparum, acute liver failure, DIC, pancreatitis burns and some other less causes are also there. So, we know the what is the causes now before we go to the further talk about ARDS, we again go to pathophysiology, what happened in this. So, a protein rich fluid is in the interstitium and of course, capillaries are also collapsed, but at the moment I am showing the what happened in the initial stages. Normally, oxygen goes like this from alveolus to capillary and CO2 comes out like this. This is normal what happened in the physiology. Now, as in ARDS, a protein rich fluid has accumulated in the interstitium. Oxygen cannot go in. Why? Oxygen is a water insoluble gas, but CO2 is a water soluble gas, it can come out. So, as oxygen is not going inside, it leads to hypoxia, decrease PaO2. CO2 can come out, so that leads to decrease PaCO2, that means it will lead to type 1 respiratory failure. So, now you have understood what the mechanism of type 1 failure in ARDS. What else? Here we have a P A O 2 oxygen in alveolus and here is P A O 2 arteriolal pulmonary arterial oxygen, but since oxygen cannot go in this gradient is increased. So, P A and this increased gradient is again a feature of type 1 failure. That is the reason why we have type 1 failure in ARDS, right. So, how the patient will have, what are the clinical features, what patient will have in this patient. Patient usually have acute onset of dyspnea, acute onset is within 7 days, but in 50 percent cases onset occurs within 24 hour of onset of the illness of the insult. So, that lead to tachypnea, increased respiratory rate, tachycardia, BP may fall. then fever may be there depending on the infection is there or not. As the fluid is mainly accumulated in the interstitium, so clinically patient may not have any sign, no signs on auscultation may not be there, but sometimes some rals or ronchi may be there because of some compression. So, by and large patient is, but one thing is very obvious is tachypnea and dyspnea. So, how to investigate? So, how to investigate and how to diagnose? Investigation. Chest X ray is the best initial test you see diffuse opacities bilateral, then ABG, ABG will show you type 1 respiratory failure. Then what else? You have to go for CBC examination, then you have to go for 
liver function test if liver is involved, kidney function test to see for the perfusion, all these are supportive element to see other things are involved or not. Okay. Well, now how we diagnose a case of ARDS? We have Berlin's definition. It says to diagnose a case of ARDS, it has to be acute onset within one week, but remember 50 percent patient they manifest within first 24 hour. FAO2, FIO2 is less than 300. This we have to understand. This need basic concept. You know very well that normal PaO2 is 95 to 102. Let us say it is 100. A normal FiO2 is 0.21. Again, I must tell you what is FiO2. We all are breathing from the atmosphere and in the atmosphere it is 21 percent oxygen is there, rest all are other gases. So, in the scale of 100 we are getting 21 percent of the oxygen, in the scale of 1 we are getting 0.21 percent of the oxygen. So, FiO2 is fractional inspiratory oxygen is 0.21. Okay. So, this comes out to be somewhere around let us say for easy calculation I am taking it 0 0.20. So, it comes out to be 500. The so normal FiO2 is somewhere between 450 to 500. This is the FiO2. Now, what happened in ARDS? In ARDS, I told you hypoxia occurs and the definition of hypoxia is PaO2 less than 60. 60 is the PaO2 and FiO2 0 0.20 for easy calculation normally is 0 0.21. This is 300. So, this ratio less than 300 is the second criteria. In fact, when it is less than 300, we call as acute lung injury. If it is 40, PaO2 has gone to 40, it's more hypoxia, 0 0.20, it is 200. Now, we call it to be ARDS. That means, acute lung injury and ARDS are in the same spectrum. The ALI is little earlier than the ARDS. So, this now we are clear about it. In chest x ray, in you get bilateral infiltrate on chest x ray. I told you diffuse opacities are seen in chest x ray. And the fourth is respiratory failure not explained by congestive heart failure. These are the criteria how we diagnose a case of ARDS. Now, we start talk about that we have the patient who is gasping for the oxygen, his PaO2 has gone to as low as 40 or maybe even less than 40 also. Now, we have to treat, remember he is a case of type 1 failure. So, what we do? Of course, we first give the, you have to treat a basic cause, but our basic cause suppose is gram negative septicemia, give antibiotic. Now, we want to give oxygen has to be given. We want to give oxygen, the dif but difficulty is most of the alveoli are collapsed and as well as there is fluid in the interstitium. So, as the alveoli are collapsed, oxygen cannot go in because of these two hurdles and patient is gasping for the oxygen, otherwise he will die very soon. So, what we do? We put the patient on ventilator, we put on PEEP, positive and 
expiratory pressure. So, we put the patient on mechanical ventilator and what we give? We give low tidal volume, low tidal volume 4 to 6 ml per kg what we give low tidal volume. Okay. Now, peep will now how the peep will going to act? It will going to create lot of pressure in the alveoli. First of all, it will open up the alveoli because of pressure. It is just like in the balloon, we fill the air, we put a pressure and balloon uh, expands because of pressure, same thing. It is going to increase the, op uh, increase the surface area by opening more and more alveoli, more surface area is there for more gas exchange will be there. Second, as the gas is under oxygen is coming under pressure, it will increase solubility of the oxygen into the liquid media in the interstitium. We know very well, any gas under pressure lead to more solubility in the liquid. So, we use the same formula, right. So, we are putting the patient on P. Third, we increase the FiO2. Suppose FiO2 is 0 0.20, that means only one fifth of oxygen is going after the whole air. If you increase FiO2, more and more oxygen will go inside. We put, put the patient on prone position that increases delivery of oxygen. Even patient has to be intubated to on the prone position is always better than the supine position. Role of steroid is not very much, not very effective, but they do use steroid, especially in pneumocystic carinae infection, and they say it may prevent some hyaline membrane formation. And of course, supportive treatment in the form of nutritional support has to be given, but again, the most important thing is treat the basic cause. And this is all about. ARDS. Thank you very much.